In this tutorial we're going to create a uh, tornado system that's going to travel across here and plough through our barn uh, sending shrapnel and shards and dust and debris everywhere uh, whilst also kicking up dust and debris up the funnel and also distributing it outwards across the uh, across the scene. Uh, so if you decide to open up the Barn Tornado Start Max scene which is included with this video tutorial make sure you accept any file unit changes when you uh, load the scene in. It's be a little floating panel of it appears up here uh, quite simply because we're going to be dealing with uh, particle systems and distances so make sure that you accept the file unit changes otherwise you might end up with a different uh, result than what I end up with in this video tutorial okay so let's have a quick look at what we've got in our scene to start with we've got three lights in here uh, two skylights and one direct light which is simulating the sun uh, we've got two skylights in here one is casting shadows with pretty low uh, rays per sample value just to improve render times uh, when it comes to actual production render you might want to increase that up to about 10 or 15 or something like that even though it will affect render time quite substantially especially when you're dealing with a hell of a lot of particles that we'll introduce later on the other one this guy here, just grab it, doesn't actually have any shadows in there and that's got a pretty low multiplier value. Now the reason I've done that is simply to bring up the uh, luminance of the shadows uh, so it's not totally black when we're actually dealing with a lot of overlaid shadows from a lot of the particles. Uh, that's so that if you decide to bring the thing into the comp you've actually got a bit more information in there so you can adjust the contrast yourself so it's not completely and utterly black in the shadow area. If you want to bin that then feel free however if we actually do a quick test render it doesn't look too bad as it currently stands. So we've got this key light that's coming across here that's matching the uh, the lighting. The funnel itself isn't casting shadows as you may notice uh, however the barn is. Now the barn itself is actually made up of several pieces of geometry. got a redraw issue here so I'm just going to maximize that. It's actually made up of a very very large amount of geometry which is actually split up into these individual layers. So if I just pull that across there we can actually see exactly what's how it's uh, all been assigned. So if I just turn off all of these guys individually and then build it back up I'm just going to kill this background as well because we seem to have a bit of a redraw issue okay so first off we've got the building left standing now this is the geometry which is going to be left once our tornado has been ploughed through the rest of it is going to be pretty much distributed around the scene then we've got the uh, next heavier items which is the posts and beams which are these guys here I'll just turn those off uh, so these are like the underlying structure of the building Next one we've got we've got the inner posts and beams which which make the foundation up for the roof. Uh, next one is the roof supports, which is these kind of general slats which hold on the tiles and also the exterior slats. Okay, so in essence, what we're going to do is we're going to build up multiple uh, space warps to affect each one of these guys individually. So pretty much the majority of the space warps are going to be virtually the same but they are going to have different influence areas so for example we've got a vortex space warp in here uh, that's going to have a for example a smaller affected radius for the posts and beams than the vortex that's going to be applied to the roof tiles and building slats so therefore the roof tiles and building slats will obviously fly off first before the posts and beams do so the, the uh, tornado obviously has to get closer to the to the barn before the posts and beams start flying out as opposed to the roof tiles and building slats. Okay, just as a side note, the materials for the tiles and the posts and beams and what have you are all based on one specific texture map. Um, we've got an absolute load of materials assigned, uh, all based, like I say, on this main driftwood map which is included with the 3ds max map library so therefore um, you should be able to load this in no problem if you can't load this in if you do get a missing map issue then check your uh, maps installation just to make sure you've got this thing installed and I say it does come with 3ds max so if you, it hasn't if you haven't got it installed then check your installation each one is basically been tweaked slightly so we've got an offset for each one just to break up the texture and uh, we've got a slight change in the output amount and the RGB levels to kind of darken and lighten up the map a little bit so we get this nice um, variation in intensity so it kind of breaks up the effect overall. 
Okay. Now the reason I've actually built this thing as individual slats and individual pieces so it breaks up more realistically. Uh, each slat is pretty much broken up as well. So we've got um, not every single slat is solid. Each one is is um, well a fair amount of them even are broken up into pieces. So if I just jump in pretty close, let's have a quick look at some of that. A bit too close there maybe. So if I turn these guys on, so here we can see a couple of pieces here. I've got one there and I've got one here as well. So um, when this breaks up you might get um, one part flying off first and then the next part. So it just looks a little bit more realistic when it actually comes through to the uh, distribution. Now this is actually um, a combination of breaking up using the script and also uh, hand modeling just to break it up so we've got like these kind of like nice large poles here which like I say will go flying off like this before the next piece does so it'll kind of break up in turn okay so that's pretty much our scene gone through oh actually one last thing I want to have a quick look at this ground plane has actually got a uh, matte shadow material assigned to it so it's just set to receive shadows and affect alpha by default uh, so therefore when it's actually rendered like I say just bring that guy back up. It's rendered onto the back plate um, so you can see the shadows on the ground and obviously not the plane itself. Now the back plate is a simple bitmap map which I've included with this tutorial which is just a farmland scene which I shot uh, a while back so that's just included as a screen map in there and if you notice when I actually scoop back to this guy and turn this on it's also included in the viewport background as well now like I said we've actually having a few redraw issues in here uh, quite simply because of the video uh, recording software that I'm using so what I'm going to do is I'm, like I said, I'm going to turn this guy off now if I scoot through the animation the tornado passes through the barn so that's already set now this is just set with two main keyframes one at uh, frame 0 and one at frame 200. Now these guys are set to a linear keyframe type so therefore we don't get a ramp up and ramp down of animation. So got one there and one there and what I've also got is if you notice in the curve editor I've actually set this these keyframes to this guy here which is the uh, out of range types so relative repeat so in essence we've got a, like a linear attack and a linear uh, decay in here so with relative repeat turn on we actually could just use this guy but I've just enabled this one so we have a um, an introduction to the animation prior to frame 0 and also exiting past frame 200 so in case you did want to decide to extend the length of the sequence um, the reason we've got one um, as an introduction to like prior to frame 0 is quite simply because we want a particle build up over here um, already existing when we actually join the scene so we want the kind of trail that's over here so in essence prior to frame 0 if I, if I basically just scoot this back if I scrub this back here so you can see it's actually traveling back f from about you know well back to infinity in fact if I drag it all the way back here you can see it's all the way back over here going away to frame zero um, so our particles are going to start being born around about this point about minus frame 100 or something like that so we have some already established when we actually join the scene at frame zero okay I'm just going to put that back and then set the end time to 200 as it was okay so this is our animation length like I say um, if you decide to extend the length of the sequence then feel free uh, but obviously deal with the 200 frames uh, within this video tutorial